Good morning, everybody. It's great to see you all out uh, so early in the morning. I came in uh, from St. John this morning. But I grew up in Fredericton. Uh, I graduated from, Saint, uh, from Fredericton High School, and uh, my uh, dad uh, started up Point La Pro and was the first plant manager and uh, ran it for 15 years. Um, I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, I worked in high tech for 20 years where my passion was working in small companies, uh, you know, taking them from about 10 employees to over 100 employees. I love that <clears throat> really busy uh, rush of working as a team to, uh, to grow a company. Uh, when I left high tech, I was vice president of research and development for a firm named Instantel. Uh, we made little tags for babies in, uh, in hospitals as they were born. Uh, we grew the company four times over uh, during the five years I was there. And uh, when I left, it was being sold to an American um, <clears throat> investment group from Detroit. I then switched to looking after my young family uh, and ran for the school board where I became the chair of the school board. Uh, and I applied the same growth tactics that uh, we had used in the high tech industry to uh, creating great change in the school board. Uh, you know, a board of uh, 7,000, 8,000 employees. And that was a really interesting time for me, learning how to, uh, to take what I had learned in a small high-tech company and apply it to a very large organization. And uh, we took that, uh, that school board and, and made it uh, world-renowned in a lot of areas, including innovation and creativity, which uh, is a, a passion of mine, being an engineer. So we modernized the, uh, the school board and, uh, uh, worked as a team and, and uh, really enjoyed that. <clears throat> and that's where I sort of found my NDP roots, watching young kids and, and uh, seeing the barriers that they came with, you know, through no fault of their own, and, uh, and helping to remove those barriers for kids so that everybody can succeed. And so we, we did that, and we, we took kids who were living in, in difficult circumstances and, uh, uh, you know, gave them the opportunities that, that everybody else's kids had to succeed. Tommy Douglas was the founder of the New Democratic Party. He led Saskatchewan out of the Depression, and he built a solid economy founded on an excellent public service, a strong public sector, and with a strong social safety net. Even more importantly, he founded public health care in Canada. The NDP's approach to governing the economy in this province use it, will be using evidence-based decision-making and adopting best practices. The NDP would take a comprehensive approach to growing the economy that includes both the private sector and the public sector. The two would work hand in glove to develop an economy that meets both the skills and the needs of New Brunswickers. A large portion of the province's government funding is provided through federal transfer payments. It is the government's responsibility to ensure that these funds are used effectively. We believe that by having good, strong public services, funds will be used on vital programs to invest in our province's health and to help support economic growth. So for example, in reverse, when liberal and conservative governments stripped employment insurance benefits and raided the EI insurance fund, New Brunswick's transfer payments went down disproportionately. Seasonal workers were hardest hit, and they were forced in into precarious work or poverty, leading to a double hit to our economy, particularly in the North. A second, more recent example is the health deal negotiated by Brian Gallant, where our transfer payments will not include a factor for aging, as the oldest and fastest aging province in Canada our costs will go up exponentially as it costs five times as much for someone to have health care over the age of 65 than someone under. So our costs will go up exponentially and transfer payments will go up linearly. This will have an extremely detrimental effect both on our health and on our economy. must see a progressive, 
green and bright future for themselves in this province. As our population ages, we also see as key the importance of keeping youth here. The main reason youth leave is for post-secondary education. That is why we have proposed a policy to reduce tuition for university students and eliminate it for college students. We would forgive interest on student loans for as long as youth remain in this province. Public servants understand how to use the transfer payments most effectively and to ensure that these funds go directly to supporting the people in this province. We are therefore fully opposed to the privatization of health care, education or social services as they meet none of these aims. We are also opposed to public-private partnerships as they have been shown repeatedly to put most of the risk on the public side and most of the profit on the private side and tend to funnel taxpayer money more quickly out of the province. Most P3s are eventually dismantled at great cost to the taxpayer. We see a real role for government in both providing a healthy environment for the private sector and also making sure that private sector growth is done in a responsible manner in the best short-term and long-term interests of New Brunswickers. Private companies can also be spun off out of good government investments, such as research or public services. The NDP would invest in research and educational opportunities to provide as healthy an environment as possible for entrepreneurship in this province. We believe strongly in the workers of this province, both public and private sector. This, coupled with a strong resource se sector, has enormous untapped potential to provide world-class goods and services and many skilled jobs in the process. Our school-based daycare plan would create over a thousand public service jobs in this province, fulfilling a need while creating jobs and placing services in communities, whether they be large, small, where they are needed. These would be well-paying jobs and when done properly will lead to increased tax revenue for the province. We would move home care into the public sphere by returning the extramural program to the health networks and by expanding the program using the new home care funding from the federal government. Again, placing well-paying government jobs in the communities where they are needed. We believe that a fairer tax system is also good for the economy since a dollar in the hands of a low-income earner is spent more fully in the local economy than a dollar in the hands of a high-income earner, where it is saved or moved offshore. Our plan to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour over four years will have a positive impact on the New Brunswick economy, putting more disposable income in the hands of thousands of families. We will do this over four years, and we will look for ways to work together to lessen the impact on employers who need to transition through this. We also see a role for government in providing an environment where private enterprises are encouraged to act responsibly towards their workers and pay them a living wage, as well as benefits, provide a safe working environment, and encourage them to move away from precarious employment practices. We are proposing changes to labor laws to accomplish this. We believe, and I believe as an employer, a former employer, that workers who are treated fair, fairly will be more efficient and more productive and stay longer, keeping companies from having to rehire and retrain people on a frequent basis. The New Brunswick NDP will ensure that our abundant resources are developed in the best interest of the people of New Brunswick in a sustainable way and ensure that environmental, social and health and indigenous concerns are fully addressed. We will also ensure that value-added processing is done as much as possible within the province, creating the higher value jobs that go with it and providing incentives to do so wherever reasonably possible. The New Brunswick NDP will also provide incentives to encourage a green economy that moves us away from fossil fuels and encourages the development and use of more progressive energy technology. We believe that New Brunswick having a large landmass and a relatively small population, 
has enormous potential to become completely fossil fuel free in a very short period, given the collective will to do so. When green technology is used effectively, it leads to lower energy prices as the highest component of energy cost is the fuel. Wind, solar, tidal and geothermal are all fuel free. The quicker we move to fossil fuel free energy sources, the more we will have to invest. It is a positive feedback loop, as we say in engineering, and that we should encourage. We would put in place a carbon tax structure to encourage this in a way that does not adversely affect the average New Brunswicker. Working with ND Power, a strong, capable and progressive entity, we will ensure that New Brunswick is on the cutting edge of green energy. We will have more to say about this during our campaign. The New Brunswick NDP believes that good services and products created in New Brunswick are some of the highest quality in the world and are well suited to exportation. We believe the government can play a role in ensuring that local companies are well connected and well informed about the export markets and can help them navigate the rules and regulations and possible risks of exportation. We also believe the government can play a role in assimilating information and providing links that will help New Brunswick companies to meet their export goals. Specifics of an NDP job strategy, including a plan for economic development in rural and northern New Brunswick, will be forthcoming during our campaign. I'm going through your list of questions and I'm on labor force development. <laughs> The New Brunswick NDP has announced a plan for free tuition for community colleges and reduced tuition for universities, both keeping youth here and attracting youth from other provinces to move here. We believe in lifelong learning and allowing people of all ages to access the highest quality of education possible. We believe that our education system and our post-secondary education system must be modernized to better equip our young people and indeed all the people of New Brunswick to adapt to the rapidly changing world in which we live. We can build on our rich heritage and our natural diversity to provide education programs in industry that are world class and world renowned. We believe that New Brunswick can offer unique and progressive education programs that are grounded in who we are as a people that will attract youth from around the world. We must raise our literacy rates across all age groups and we must provide the educational environment to produce creative, innovative and thoughtful citizens. This will be informed by best practices from countries around the world. And indeed, the gurus from Finland and the UK and Brazil all came uh, to see how we did our work in the school board. We have a rich heritage and a diverse population that can fuel an innovative and creative economy and provide highly educated and adaptive population that will propel New Brunswick into the future. And now I'm on responsible financial management. <clears throat> New NDP governments have been some of the most financially responsible governments in Canadian history, and an NDP government under my leadership would be no exception. By f fully consulting New Brunswickers, researching and informing our decisions, there will be fewer costly mistakes and delays paid for by New Brunswickers, both financially and in terms of time and aggravation. Of course, different economic circumstances call for different approaches, but a focused and well-principled approach to governing that puts the well-being of New Brunswickers first yields savings as well. For example, by fully researching and informing our decisions, fewer reversals and fewer costly mistakes will be made, like the property tax scandal. Rather than large handouts to large corporations, who don't need our tax money, we would focus on providing a creative and innovative and supportive environment for businesses to flourish. In summary, a New Brunswick NDP government under my leadership would build a strong economy. Working together, we will build a province where our youth will want to stay and come back to a province that supports quality public services 
for everyone. A province that fights against poverty, illiteracy, and unemployment. A province that values the environment and supports decent wages for workers. A province that values the wisdom and the rights of our First Nations peoples. And a New Brunswick that we will build together. I love questions, so if you have questions, uh, please feel free. So I'm just wondering if you could give us an idea of what the NDP's health care priorities are in the uh, upcoming election. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a lot of current topics in health care. Uh, we are very concerned about the privatization of health care uh, and the moves of the government towards privatization. Uh, so we have seen, for example, the extramural program, the telecare program, Ambulance New Brunswick, uh, until recently the food services and hospitals all being privatized. We believe in a strong uh, public health care system and in providing uh, full and comprehensive health care to the people of New Brunswick. Uh, quite concerned about the fentanyl um, uh, problem that's coming and have seen a lot of work going on down in St. John and, and other areas across the province in terms of that. So structuring our healthcare system to be able to be flexible and adaptable and able to uh, to address a lot of these issues I think is, is of paramount impor importance uh, and uh, making sure that we have a very strong uh, and ready uh, healthcare system under the public sphere uh, is, uh, is, is how we would uh, look at, at the healthcare system. Are there any specifics around um, healthcare um, with respect to the physicians and other healthcare providers in the province um, with respect to where they can practice, how they can practice, um, those types of things? Yes, I, I met with the nurse practitioners yesterday, and we sat in breakout groups and started some of those conversations about uh, about how how the different roles work. and uh, And I I said to them, you know, I think I'm a systems thinker, and uh, I'm going around knocking on doors and talking to people, and they share with me their their health uh, stories. And I'm always thinking, well, how does the system, you know, how can we structure the system? to match the needs of New Brunswickers. And so I don't have a direct answer for you today, but that's going to feed into what we propose in our platform for health care for New Brunswick. Uh, during your presentation, you talked a lot about your uh, experience in business, uh, mm -hmm. private, private enterprise. But I must say, when I read the material that uh, you've been putting out in your op-eds and that the NDP have been talking about, I, I get a, a sense that there's a foot on the gas and a foot on the brake at the same time when it comes to business. And I will draw your attention to an op-ed you wrote regarding privatization of, uh, of health care. And this sentence jumped right out at me because uh, it seemed to be a very broad brush. The natural tendency of private companies to underpay and increase the workload of their employees is also not good for the economy or for overall well-being. Could you elaborate on that? Because you seem to be covering all businesses with that. And I would disagree strenuously to that. Yeah, I think, I think that's a, a valid uh, a remark, and I, I appreciate your bringing it forward. What I, I've been in uh, St. John knocking on doors uh, now for, for quite a few months, and what I'm finding is people who are pretty much in despair. They, they're working two and three jobs, and they can't pay their bills still. And uh, it's, you know, and if it's not them, then they, their nieces or nephews or their grandkids, they're in the same boat. And so that was probably on my mind when I, when I wrote that. But if a business is run with the sole um, objective is looking at the bottom line, and I did see tendencies of that when I was in, in business, uh, that, uh, that, that, you know, that would be where the, the logic would naturally take you. There are wonderful businesses with a very good social conscience and who do reward their employees and who do understand that uh, pl playing your employees well and treating them well is good for business. So I do appreciate your comments and feedback on that line. Right, but what you have done 
is put nuance in your statement that you just put in, in, Yes, in, and I and, appreciate hearing from you well, about and, that. Well, and not only that, but you've been talking to a lot of people. How many small business people have you talked about, uh, about their concerns about being sideswiped by increases in taxes, uh, proposed taxes such as carbon tax, the, the unbelievably large increases in work safe New Brunswick premiums when uh, the, the, uh, the accident record has been going down. I mean, uh, I, I, I think you and, and maybe your staff can understand that a lot of small business people, uh, you know, hear the story about Saskatchewan, know the story about Tommy Douglas, uh, you know, the balanced budgets and so on out there. They know there's been good practices, but there's also a lot of bad examples out there of NDP governments, uh, Bob Ray, for example, that didn't do such a great job. So which sort of NDP would you be and would your party uh, govern? Well, I have to say that what I found and what I have seen, and I, I'm not going to comment on Bob Ray because that's a very long time ago. Um, so is Tommy Douglas. So Douglas. Uh, what, I, what I would do as an NDP leader and as Premier is to uh, run things in a way that is, that is well um, understood uh, strategically led so that we everybody understood what our goals and objectives were and by doing that by everybody working together in the same obje uh, direction for the same objectives and bringing everybody together along uh, you can actually achieve lower costs and and a more efficient structure and a, and a team of people that are working uh, you know for the same objectives and as part of a team that actually in the at the end of the day is a more responsible and more fiscally well managed uh, government. I appreciate your mention about the assessment scandal, which yes. truly has been a scandal. Yes. And one of the things we've been calling for is a task force to review our property tax system and assessments. Yes. In our province, we have one of the highest property assessments and tax ration systems in, in the country. Yep. And it's not getting better. Yep. Um, and I, I would like to ask you if you could comment on if you were to form government, would you look at a task force that yes. would look at a competitive yes. rate? Yes, yeah, absolutely. It would be a priority. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things wrong with the, the property tax system. I think the Liberal government promised to do that and then reneged on their province promise. Yeah, so thank you for, for bringing that up. Yeah, I think it's absolutely critical. I think there's a lot of unfairness in the property tax system and uh, probably some of the things that you were talking about as well. Here for a minimum wage. That seems to be the the figure that's uh, thrown out in, in every province and in, in every state. But why is that well, the right number for New Yesterday, Brunswick? the day before yesterday, there was a, a presentation given by the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives out of Nova Scotia, as well as the um, the, the social enterprise in St. John, looking at a St. John living wage, and they came up with the figure. I don't know if you heard eighteen dollars and eighteen cents uh, per hour. However, the largest component of that was childcare. So $15 is meant to be, it's not a living wage, but getting close to a living wage. People can't live on $11 an hour, and especially not if they have a family. It's, it's perfectly clear. And so $15, I think, is a, is a reasonable target uh, for, the, for the medium to short term. And uh, when we start putting in more affordable, more accessible, more um, universal child care, then $15 plus the child care uh, approach that we're taking will allow families to live not a lavish lifestyle, but at least they'll be able to, to put food on the table and keep the roof over their heads. So 50, that to me was very affirming that, that we're on the right road with our $15 an hour minimum wage uh, and that that coupled with some, some good accessible social programs will allow families to be much more comfortable and lift, get rid of some of that despair anyway that we're seeing when we knock on doors.